lot to everybody. Happy Sunday. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys all had a very happy St. Patrick's Day. I got to see many of you on Live Wire Whiskey. That was super fun. There was no way I was going to be able to do my own stream that day. I didn't even get home until after six o'clock. So please like, click the like button, click share, do all that fun stuff that YouTube likes us to do. Let me know what you guys are drinking in chat today. So let's see who we got here today. Uh, we are also going to do our Patreon giveaway at the end of the stream. So we have Marty. Cheers, Marty, Mr. Whiskey Nose. It's good to see you, Marty. Cheers, William Reynolds. It is good to see you. Ah, Sugar Kitty. You're going to have to help me with that one, Sugar Kitty. Tom Do 12, which I'm sure is not how you pronounce it because Gaelic doesn't work that way. But meow, Sugar Kitty. It's good to see you. Cheers, James Morgan. Sipping a Campbelltown Lock. That one I can get. Cheers, James Morgan. It's good to see you. So I am going to bring in my guest. Um, this gentleman is local. He is big on Instagram, TikTok, and is one of the first people locally that reached out to me. I've been wanting to get together with him and do this flight for a really long time. So please help me welcome Shri from Two Ounce Whiskey. Hi, everybody. Cheers, Lancha. Thank you for joining us today. This is this is so much fun. I'm so so excited to share Irish whiskey with you. Yeah, I love it. I love Irish whiskey. I don't have that much of it, so to get a spread like this from like a master, this is great. Oh, and so we had so much fun. You notice I did not send you anything from Ohio because Ray Shri was at the same events that I was at, so he got to sample all the good stuff in Ohio as well. Yeah, it was very. Good. Yeah, you probably know all the scotch that they're drinking because I know you you're big into scotch too. I do. That's where this whole thing started yeah, with in the Scotch world. Cheers. We have Richard White, my last cup of coffee. Oh, that sounds good. I had tea this morning. My stomach was not feeling the coffee today. Cheers, Andrew Butler. All right. So we're just going to get into this flight. So the this actually, this flight was inspired by about a year ago. Um, you did a video and I kind of picked up off of it about all the variety in casks. And I did one where Irish whiskey can be in all of these different casts. So I wanted to send you a flight that kind of showcased a lot of the variety with Irish whiskey. So the first one that we're getting into is Method and Madness, single pot still. And this one is finished in mulberry wood casks. Mulberry? So mulberry wood. This is the only Irish whiskey that has been finished in mulberry wood. Really? So this one is 46% ABV. This one, I, I tried to find a picture of the casks um, when they made these. These were, these were actually um, 50 liter quarter casks. And they were so wonky looking. Because, you know, normally a cask is still it's narrow at the top and narrow at the bottom. These were so short and squatty. But really? it was the only way that they could get the, work, the wood to work. Because it's a very hard wood. It's a very porous wood. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know you could do this. Mulberry wood. Mulberry, they, you know, and, and Middleton is the first people that'll tell you not all the things they do at Method and Madness are successes. They've got quite a few failures in the different Woodcast series, but they've done some in the, um, the Wild Cherry. They've done them in Acacia. Actually, their latest is Gariana Oak, uh -huh. which I know everybody knows from Westland. Yeah. Uh, if any of you ever get samples from Stacey, she's got little labels with her, <laughs> her logo on it. <laughs> Hey, cheers, Mike Stahl. Mike, I was just talking about our stream last week. I went on Livewire Whiskey because he goes live at nine o'clock my time. Yeah. I could I could rally by nine. I just could not rally by six. Yeah. It was a big weekend for you. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we were downtown at 8.30 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. Hey, cheers, GT Mustang 09. Yeah. Yeah, anything that porous is not going to be all that great for keeping the juice in. Yes. Yeah. It, it was, a, they, they admitted it was a tricky one. Um, it was popular. I don't know if they'll do it again. I think they're moving on. Like the Gary, um, they did Japanese uh, cedar wood. They did a Japanese, what was the other one? A Japanese oak or something. They did Denver no. Sonora. They've done, and then the Garyana oak is their latest one. The Garyana oak I have heard is coming to the U.S. I'm not sure. Where, what where's the Gariana from? Like, what kind of wood is that? I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Um, it's not from Oregon. I don't think it's from Oregon. I know that's 
where Westland, and Westland's in Oregon or Washington? Northwest, somewhere over there. Yeah, North, Pacific Northwest, somewhere. Hey, cheers, Mark Vasco. Man, I drank good last week. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, got, Mike got one of the flights last week. Yeah. Nice. I like this one. Um, trying to put that into words is a little hard right now. I don't know. It's different. What are you getting on the palate? So there's a note that I've gotten on this one that I've never gotten on any other Irish whiskey. I get kind of a smoked paprika. Oh. Reminds me a little of barbecue. I got none of that. I was going to say blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little um, pear on this one as well. I can see the pear. I love smoked paprika. I add it on like most things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't get it. I wish I got it. But that is really good. Now these, um, unfortunately, I don't think they say. Yeah, and it doesn't say, which means it probably is not natural color. Um, unfortunately, Middleton is one of the companies that does use artificial coloring. So that color might not be true. Okay. But it's still, it's, it's completely different. I don't know of if any other whiskey brand that has finished a whiskey in mulberry cask. Yeah. Is there any push in the Irish whiskey community to like change the laws so you can't add all that stuff to be more strict? Mm -mm. That's no, that's one of the things. Uh, that's one of the things about Irish whiskey is per the regulations, all it states is that it has to be finished in a wood cask, doesn't say anything else. So you could put it in any kind of wood cask, it's can, and you're going to see as we go through this, it can contain just about any other kind of alcohol in it because I mixed it up a little bit for you, but and, yeah, and, and other alcohols. Wow, it, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The one of my one of my favorites that was in Ohio is the Liberator Tawny Port. Those are good. Those are put in very wet tawny port casts. Like the very first release he had, um, the whiskey was almost had a, a it, well, it didn't almost, it did have a pink tinge to it. Yeah. And that was because the, the casts were, were three weeks from the time they were emptied and he put the whiskey in it. Yeah. And he said he actually backed off that. Or he, he realized that might've been a little too much. And so the second and subsequent releases, he's backed off of it a little bit, but I, I enjoyed it. Heck out of it. I like this one. It's an easy sipper, different flavor that you don't usually get. Mulberry wood, I kind of like it. For me, I think that light fruity flavor was the pear and like a blueberry, which I don't usually get in a whiskey. So this I like the wood spice on this one too. Oh, thank you, Sugar Kitty. Westland is Washington State. Garyana is Washington, Oregon trees. All right, maybe they did get, maybe they did get them from there. Thank you. All right, cheers, Zofer, 1920. It's good to see you, man. <clears throat> Not an oh, we get all the good guys. Got whiskey glasses, and they are like my favorite thing I've ever got. Oh, those are so cool. Yes, um, it's like really thick oh, and man. heavy on the bottom. Like, oh, there you go. Hold up your glass. Oh, it's really thick go. and heavy on the bottom, just like some of those aged and ore glasses. And then it's got the big tulip, um, like your blender's glasses with the big stem, uh, and then it's really narrow on the top, like a blender. I really like that. It's got all the things I want which is to be able to smell really well and for it to be like nice and sturdy and heavy on the bottom. I like it. The I was only not to say that, so find these on the <laughs> The only negative I could see to that glass, it looks, that one looks like one that'd be real easy to overfill. Oh yeah. That bulb, <laughs> that bulb is big. <laughs> and Zopher is sipping on Port Charlotte 18. 18? 18. I didn't even know they made an 18. I didn't either. That sounds really good. I do like Port Charlotte. That does sound really good. <clears throat> yeah, let me know what you guys are drinking. Yeah, Mike's spotting some Costco, uh, the Costco Blue Spot 239. Yeah, that's it's not worth that, Mike. It's Blue Spot. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Mine's right up there. Nice. <laughs> I, I wish I batched batch two find, this time. I wish we could find Red Spot here in Ohio. It's too hard. We did have it. It just sold out. They're having it's trouble keeping up with demand. It's like a once in a year thing. Like it'll just pop up and then it's gone. It is. It comes over one. It comes over once a year. Yeah. Um. I wish it came over more often. I snagged a gold spot when those came out. Did like a like a split. Like me and a. Oh, you got one. yeah. So those were ridiculously hard to find here. Um. I actually got. My bottle from elsewhere, I'm not going to say how, um, but I have friends 
that I had a bottle from when it first came out. Um, I did not get the newest release. So Gold Spot just released another, they released another Gold Spot. It's a 13 year. Another one. It's been, yeah, it's finished. Yeah, that that's part of the reason I didn't, because I was a little annoyed because Middleton came out. It's never going to happen again. It's a one time only. And then they came out, hey, we're having another Gold Spot. <laughs> they lowered the ABV to 46%. And the price, the retail price is $150. So I mean, it's still going to sell out. So why not? It is. It is. It's going to. Um, it's finished in an Italian wine casks, which I think it should have been in the Green Spot wine series, mm -hmm. but those sell for less. So they, it's another gold spot. Yeah. So I think they replaced the port or something like that in it, but, or no, they replaced the Bordeaux. They replaced the Bordeaux. Okay. So, hey, Amy, cheers to you. Making beef and Guinness pie. Ooh, mm -hmm. I had Guinness too last week. I think I'll pour a blue spot since somebody just mentioned that one. There you go, Mike. Great minds. You can't go wrong with that. Port Charlotte 18 has been released this month. Bottles are now actually on the shelf. So I Ohio think... doesn't always get scotch right away, so it might not have been here yet. Port Charlotte 18. There's a Brucladi 18. Um, it's in the same color as like the classic Laddie, that like teal mm -hmm. color. I don't know if you remember what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, I like I like the classic Laddie. Yeah, so it's in that same color, but it's a Brucladi 18. I don't think it's a Port Charlotte. I don't know. Maybe it's a Port Charlotte. Sugar can you, yeah, he's a big Scotch guy. He'll he'll definitely know and can tell us if it's different. Yeah. Not okay. available in Ohio. So the next one, we're going to be drinking the Teeling Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. We're sticking with Single Pot Still Wonders of Wood. This is the Virgin Portuguese Oak. Ooh. -hoo -hoo. So this, the entire maturation has happened in a virgin Portuguese oak cask. I like that. This one is up to 50% ABV. This one comes in this fancy little box. Uh -huh. $99. It is available in Ohio. Nice. Available in many U.S. states. This is the second um, in the Wonders of Wood series. Everybody keeps waiting on for them to produce the third, and they haven't. Uh, they're both 18s, peated and unpeated. Oh, oh, I would love that. So it sounds like it's brand new. What's yours, Eric Henderson? Oh, wow. The Laddie 18 is a deeper color blue than the classic. Okay. Once it hits Ohio, I'm getting one, but they're not in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, some, I, I have noticed sometimes Irish and Scotch, we, we don't get them right away. Um, it just depends. Irish, if it comes into Newport, Virginia, we tend to get it right after Jersey in the Northeast. Um, if it comes in on the West Coast, it takes a while. The nose on this is so good. Ooh. It's very oh. spicy. It's a lot spicier. Yeah. You get a lot more dries out a lot at the, in the end. Yeah. This is one I think bourbon drinkers would enjoy um, because of the amount of spice in it from the, <laughs> the virgin oak in this. Yeah. 50, but it's a 50-50 mash bill, an, a malta barley, malta barley. So it's, it's still really approachable, but I really like that one. This is really good. Yeah, I'm getting the spice for sure. Which is and fun. Amy has heard me say that. Yeah, if you're getting that? a lot of spice in bourbons, like it could be from the rye content. Mm -hmm. Knowing that this is all barley, all that spice is really coming from the wood. I like it. Oh, thank you, Sugar Kitty. Yeah, shared your link on YouTube. Make sure you guys go subscribe. Awesome. Yeah, this one, um, I was really impressed, honestly. And Amy has heard me say this. <laughs> this is what I wish Redbreast Kentucky Oak would have been. I don't know about that one. Tell me about that it. That one was a letdown. That one, um, a friend of mine bought a bottle and I sampled it. And I'm like, nope, not buying it. <laughs> I'm over it. But that one was a letdown. And this is what I wish that would have been. This is just in your face with that wood. And, those yeah. wood spices. and that one was just kind of 
It was more subtle. Spicy, dry, and oily, and it just lasts yeah. forever. This is really good. Nice long finish. So, the, and I said, 100 bucks. I didn't think that was bad at all. No. For 50% Irish whiskey. Yeah. Pretty good quality. Do they have an age statement on it? Uh, they do not. Okay. No age statement on this one. I can't recall what I looked it up. I, it's in my uh, my video review. Sugar um, Kitty, thank you so much. Thank you, Sugar Kitty. Sugar Kitty is the best mod ever. I love. I got some great mods. Sugar Kitty is always there with all the links. You have mods. That's so official. Yeah. yeah so I don't have to. I don't have to try to drop links and do all this stuff. Nice. These guys are awesome. These guys are great. I can't do lives because I end up getting wasted. <laughs> Yeah, you're, just, yeah. you're with friends and you're sharing things. You're talking and it just ends up like oh, I <laughs> drinks. Yeah, I tr I try not to on my own streams. Um, other people, I will Irish goodbye my butt right out of there. Oh yeah, like where's Stacy? Yeah, Stacy's done for the night. I also um, learned from these guys to have a keg of water next to me the whole time. Got to pour it very lightly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to Kentucky in like uh three days with a bunch oh, nice. of a bunch of creators so i'm gonna have a lot of water near me it's gonna be crazy we did that um for bourbon on the banks last year a bunch of the the whiskey youtube community got together down there and had a kind of a after party at one of the one of their homes that they were renting and i mean just the bottles that everybody brought i mean i brought a 20 year irish and i think only one person touched that because it was just there's a hundred different yeah. bottles of stuff that you'll never see on the table it was so much fun yeah oh it does take discipline ask mike yeah i've seen a few people uh <laughs> i've seen a few people drunk like that yeah i didn't like kentucky oak at first then really enjoyed it went back to it we don't have this particular tealing mm -hmm. yeah amy i think you had the chicken bin, the first one okay What's next? next? I think is actually, yep, that one's 56. So next one, we're going to the Bushmills. So this is a, um, a very, very special bottle. So um, good friends of mine that I have met through YouTube, um, Chris Tatz and Lilith Morgan, who are Australian. Well, this was a release for the Australian Whiskey Club, and I got them a bottle of Gold Spot, and they grabbed me one of these. And this is a Bushmills Causeway Collection 2012 Burgundy Cask Finish. Ooh. So this is a natural color. Oh, wow. So this one has won multiple awards. This one, um, 2012 release. Um, it was distilled in 2012, recast in 2018 for four years in a Burgundy wine cask. This one is 51.8% ABV. If you ever travel um, UK, Ireland, Canada, Australia, Great Britain, these Bushmills Causeway collection releases are worth every penny. Almost all of them are bottled at cast strength, natural color. Did not yeah. know that. Square bottle and the cylinder is trippy. <laughs> Normally, I would have had to drink this last because it's just an awesome, awesome bottle. But we're getting into some proofier stuff. So, yeah. and the heated stuff. The, palate, but... the palate's just waking up. And this is like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, um, I'm super excited. My husband and I are going to Ireland, well, back to Ireland this fall. And one of the places we're going is the new Bushmills Causeway Distillery. So, Bushmills just created a brand new. Kind of like Middleton has a distillery within a distillery yeah. and it's dedicated to their Causeway collection releases. So they release um, several every year, two for the Ireland market and then some for different markets around the world. And Alex Thomas this past year um, had a cognac cask release and a virgin oak the year before. It was a pumeral cask release and a vermouth cask. But I do have the vermouth bottle. That one is a 2002. Oh, nice. So Irish single malt from one of Ireland's oldest distilleries, which I know you like scotch, so I know you would like single malt. 
Oh, I would love that. The vermouth part throws me off. I don't like vermouth in cocktails, like Manhattans. I don't really dig those. So maybe I wouldn't like the vermouth part. Of it. Why not? It's real floral, real almondy. Yeah. It does come through. Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dustin. Cheers to you. <laughs> Dustin is another big Scotch guy, which I watched Dustin's review today of the Hazelburn 15. Right, Dustin? Hazel. Dustin got it, kind of got us hooked on Hazelburn. Yeah, Amy, that color is freaking gorgeous natural color. There's something about this one. It's um, a little bitter to me. That might be the wine. <clears throat> I think so. Because I know sherry, if you leave it in a in a cask in a sherry cask for a long time, it could get kind of like a pencil shaving kind of note to it. Hmm. This one, I just love all the berry, the dark berries, jammy notes. You got cherries. Yeah, up front, it's like a jammy cherry kind of note. And then in the middle towards the end, it gets a little bitter and woody to me. But And that might be, I mean, four years in a, in a wine cask is a long time. Yeah. It's a very long time. Yeah. But all of these, these Bushmo Causeway, if, if you ever stumble upon them, they're great buy. Cast strength Irish whiskey, non-chill filtered, no artificial color. It's it's all the stuff that we look for. All the good we stuff. We want an Irish whiskey. <laughs> Ticonderoga, number two edition. Yes, this one. Yep. Yay, the tats. The Australians come through for me again. <laughs> so was I this joke with them. Like what what so what was the name of the, the shipping container boat that you had to get to get all your whiskey? Because everybody over here been picking up whiskey for a year for them. We see them once a year. And I can't even imagine how they get all this stuff home. That's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. They actually just found some samples that I gave them to. I'm like, well, I saw you guys in October. That was five months ago, but I found them. <laughs> So this was easy to find for them in Australia, but not here. Huh? Well, they're members of the Whiskey Club Australia, and it was a release uh, for their club. Oh, so okay. this was only released in the Australian market. That's it. Special bottle. Thank so, you for sharing it with me. Yeah, you're welcome. Some of these harder ones, um, like this, they do show up occasionally on auction sites. But things like this, especially Australian releases, it's not as frequent. Um, I've, I've been fortunate. I have two of the Australian releases. So it, it's just harder to get them. Now, the ones in the UK, the Irish ones, those show up on secondary market all the time. Hmm. So those you can get. It's just the Australian ones, um, the German ones tend to be a little harder to get. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Amy. Yeah, don't forget to hit that like button. You have my... They put it all in their luggage and are going to arrive at 2 a.m. when the tax agent doesn't want to process 39 bottles. <laughs> You know, you ain't probably ain't wrong. Probably ain't too far off of that one. Nice. <laughs> we went to Italy not too long ago and just couldn't find anything. <clears throat> I like made sure I had room in my luggage for bottles and there was like nothing available. That stinks. That stinks. Yeah. Or if there was, it was like super marked up. Oh, not a joke. Heard all about that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I probably is pretty right. I've I've had friends that have come back from Ireland with quite a bit and they just joke around with the agent and it's usually not worth his time to have to deal with the paperwork of it. Cause I mean, it's his personal use. So yeah, they know you're not reselling it. I tried to smooth talk my way into a duty free bottle when I, I was out of country, but I was coming back into the country and then I saw an amazing bottle. It was like a lot. It was like a Lafroy 25 or something. Oh, wow. I tried to get them to just, look the other way and let me buy it but they wouldn't let me <laughs> you know i ran into that problem so on the way back from um i had to go to banff alberta for a business last year and came back through calgary airport and flew from calgary to toronto on that little slingshot from toronto to columbus <laughs> and i can't tell you when you're going like in the toronto airport on those little tiny jets in that terminal to the u.s duty free sucks Really? Like it was like, what kind of Gretzky whiskey would you like? And that was it. I like, I was looking, I mean, they didn't even have the Jameson triple triple or the crested. So hmm. yeah, in the U S even 39 bottles is under a hundred dollars in tax in Australia. What they bought was expected to be almost $2,000. Get out of Yeah. Here. That's like, 
same with going from here to Canada and back. I know we've got some Canadian friends that when he takes whiskey over across the border back into Canada, it's outrageous the amount he has to pay in taxes. That's insane. Crazy. They're going to they're gonna get their money one way. Yes. All righty. So we're going to jump up to some cast strength Irish. Nice. So this is one of my favorite distilleries. Um, it's another one I'm visiting this fall. This is Dunville's 10-year single malt Irish whiskey PX. And this is cast strength. This is a single cast bottle. And this honestly is probably one of the prettiest bottles in all Irish whiskey. Oh, nice. So think- this one is a single cask. We're jumping up to 56.5% ABV. Now, unfortunately, um, these are not available in the U.S. Dunville's 10-year is. You can get this at several total wine stores, but this is a cast strength bottle. This is Ireland only. Lucky. So Dunville's is in County Down, which is a big hot spot for Irish whiskey just because all the great distilleries there. Nice. I love an Oloroso sherry finish. Something about a PX, because PX is like the, the sweetest, jammiest Olo, like yeah. sherry. Sometimes yeah. it can be like super sweet. I like to call it the Terry's chocolate orange of sherry. It's every, <laughs> it reminds me of that. It reminds me of those orange chocolate balls at Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Like Red Breast PX reminds me of that big time. Those are usually the citrus and the chocolate notes are usually what I get on, on PX. Um, and I do have some Oloroso um, from Dunville's. I've got some Palo Cortado from Dunville's. Dunville's mm-hmm. is a really cool distillery. Also, little known fact, they have a very large tank collection. T-A-N-K. What is that? They have Mini Coopers and they have tanks huh. at their distillery. Yeah, the owner just is into it and he has a large collection of both. So I'm excited to actually see the tanks. This knows, man. It's your favorite base. <clears throat> it's like chocolate and fruit and like dusty. I don't know. This is, I'm usually really bad with my nose, but this one's really popping out. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about Dunville's. Dunville's um, and the next distillery you're, you're going to be drinking, they're kind of known for big nose, big flavor. And, and you get a lot for your money on the value of these. Um, the latest one I have, actually one of my Patreons is going to win a sample of here. And that is the latest Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottle that was released just last week um, for St. Patrick's Day. And that is, it, it it's, turns out that's a Dunville's cast. That's a Dunville's 11 year PX single barrel. So I'm going to throw in a sample of that one. That one's really, that one's super freaking, that one is like chocolate frosting with like those little orange jelly candies on top. Oh my God. It's crazy. There's this note I get when it's malted barley and it's cast strength. Mm-hmm. It's, I got it a lot on Westward. Not Westward. West? Westward. I West one? Westward? It's an American single malt, but it's, um, they do uh, virgin wood, but they do, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's a single malt. Anyways, I get the sesame flavor and I get mm-hmm. a lot of sesame on this one. I've heard soy sauce on some of these. Yeah, like a sesame, yeah. sesame oil, soy kind of flavor. Again, natural color. Not chill filtered, natural color, cast strength Irish whiskey. So I know there's a ton of cast strength Irish whiskey out there. It's just unfortunately the U.S. doesn't see a lot of it. One month. We're starting to see more of it. Hey, Mike Meyer. Cheers to you. Thank you for joining us today. Ah, there you go. So Westward is Oregon. Westland is Washington. Well, that's confusing. I was going to find that. that would be easy to find, but it's not. <laughs> I did not realize they were that close together. Oh, well. So some sherries can bring in umami and people say soy sauce or possibly black tea. Now I have gotten black tea. I, I have a couple of the Dunvilles. I can I could tell is soy sauce as well. Yeah, after you said soy, it's like yeah, or like a hoisin sauce. Yeah, I would always call it sesame, but yeah. soy might be a better note. Sugar Kitty Westward is 
Oregon, Westland is Washington. Yes, and they both make American single malts. Yeah, they got to think of some new names because that's that's yeah. confusing as crap. So Westland, oh, they sent me a cask strength version of their American single malt, and it. I love Westland. I, their sherry cask is their sherry wood cask is so good. And those those are sherried scotches I can do without <laughs> the ones that taste like soy sauce. <laughs> Very good. That one, I would buy a bottle of. I figured you would like that one. Real woody, too. Yeah. That one, you almost get like a charred oak on it. <clears throat> like there was one here. I think the Portuguese oak you said was for a bourbon lover. Yeah. This is straight out of a Scotch lover's world would be the. <laughs> a lot of Scotch, a lot of Scotch drinkers do like the Eklenville stuff. The Dunvilles, yeah. And it's just a ton of flavor for the price. Um, I think I paid, it's over a hundred. It might've been like 110 euro. No, it was pounds, sorry. To US conversion, it was probably about $120, but it was 110 pounds. Nice, very good. Yeah, County Down is north of the border. So all their charges are in pounds. British pound sterling. And it's still where a lot of my favorite distilleries are. They're just, they're producing, so County Down is producing the whiskey that people want. So the cast strength, the non-chill filtered, the, you know, not artificial color. So we're, and, you know, they're very transparent with everything they do. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 110. I, yeah, this is like six months ago though, Dustin. This is how the Westward bottle looks. This is their purple label one. It's their cast. Is that the port or the sherry? Uh, I believe the cool thing they do is they don't do, I think they use virgin oak. Like, I don't okay. think they just previously used oak. I've only had one of their releases, I think. Yeah. Their big, their marketing thing is they use, they like mature like a bourbon. So they'll use virgin American oak. Um, but they'll have single malt going into it. Oh, wow. That's really different. Yeah. They're very good. But I get that soy sesame note on theirs. Hmm. I've only had, yeah, I've only had the one. I've had a few of the Westland. I've only had one of the West Word. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely, the, the Westland, that Sherry Wood, that thing was just like peanut butter and jelly. That thing was so freaking good. Nice. I have not had that one. Oh, I think we got it in like a little three pack um, at Party Source. Mm -hmm. And it was the regular um, single malt and then a peated single malt and then the sherry. We actually went back and bought a bottle of the sherry because we liked it so well. Oh, nice. It's nice to have that store right across the border. Oh, yeah. That's where we got Cologne. Oh, really? oh, we couldn't get it in Ohio, but we did get it at the party source. Nice. Oh, hey, Mr. Great Shot. Cheers to you. Cheers. All right. So we are skipping ahead on, and we're getting into the, the, the proofiest one that I sent you, because the last one is peated. Okay. So this one is two stacks, 13-year single grain, and this is a rosé champagne cask. Rosé champagne. Grand Cru champagne cask. So this bottle was done. Okay. Um, this was specifically done um, for five years of Irish whiskey auction site. This is a 13 year Cooley sourced single grain. So Cooley is really big on Irish whiskey. Um, it used to be a distillery. Now they're all contracted to do Tyrconnell, but a lot of their older single malt for Cullen has some, Teeling has some. Um, but the only place you're really going to see Teeling or uh, Cooley consistently is for Colin because they're still contracted for them. Hmm. But this one is 100% Irish single grain finished in a Grand Cru Rosé champagne cask. Natural color, so Irish single grain. Irish single grain can be barley, wheat, corn, um, oats, rye. Hmm. This one, I believe, is... I get corn on it, so I think it is corn. Okay. Or at least quite a bit of corn. 
Because if it was barley, it would usually be malted barley. They would just call it a single malt, right? Right. If it was malted barley, yeah, you can't have um, up to a certain amount. I think it's 30% malted barley in a single grain. But you can use a combination of any of the other grains. Irish single grain is kind of coming into itself now. Um, you're seeing a lot more of it. You're seeing a lot more age stated Irish single grain. And, and I think it does appeal to American whiskey drinkers because of the corn. I mean, corn's just, it's cheap. It's yeah. something they can use. Corn and wheat are usually with what are it single grains. But this one also is 61.5% ABV. That is different. Very my different. Still, my brain is still deciding what I just <laughs> So the thing about the two stacks, most of these are over 60% ABV. Most of these are under $100. Really? Yeah. Wow. This one, unfortunately, <laughs> I, you had to had to partake in, you know, the the, the charity auction for in Ireland to get a bottle oh, of this. I have to. I love this one. So you won this off an auction, huh? I do. Yeah, I, I contributed to the the cause. They they do a lot of um, of charitable auctions for um, the Capuchin Day Center, which is a charity in Dublin that um, feeds and houses the homeless. So they a lot of the whiskey makers get together and do an auction every year to kind of help those causes. There's a Penelope. I, there's a Penelope Rose cask that like. Yes, I have that one. Would be so that reminds me of this a bit. Yeah. Like I get it, you know, those same kind of like raspberries and cream kind of thing. I need it. I think I see it. <laughs> All right. Penelope. This is a bourbon finished in rose wine casks. And this is I love that one. Single grain finished in. Yeah. Or is it finished? And or thank you, Drifting Drams, because they were the ones that helped me find a bottle of the Penelope Rose. I love that one. Nice. I would honestly, that bottle would be gone if I could get the flipping cork out of it. I I was just gonna mention this cork <laughs> horrible. You gotta take two thumbs and cork. pop it like that. <sighs> it's the only way. I can't. I the Waterfords. I can get the cork out. The Penelope Rose. The cork top is so thin. Yeah. And half the time, I'm just like, screw it. I'm drinking something else. I, so I, I had told her before my my kids were going to be here about six thirty. Hi, here she is. Hi. This is Nina. Hi, it's good to see you. How are you? Good. <laughs> I need you to help, and I'm going to go get this. Okay, give me a little bit of time. Close the door. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, she's so stinking cute. Thank you. <laughs> There's going to be a difference here because I think yeah. the, the two stacks is 20, 20 points higher in ABV. Yeah, I was going to say, the ro they're not very similar. <laughs> no. The rosé is going to drink. I, 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 that's, it's funny because I wouldn't think anything would make that rosé drink thin, but this will. Yeah. Yeah, this one, two stacks, makes this taste like like watered down whiskey. Yeah. I'm going to get you in, to be in a two stacks fan. And two stacks, like I said, most of their releases are under $100 mm -hmm. for that ABV. Nice. I've, I've always wanted one. Do they sell any two stacks in Ohio? They don't in Ohio, but across the river at, um, at Party Source, they do have the regular, um, the two stacks, um, the cast strength. Okay. And then there is a U.S. retailer that does ship to several U.S. states. Ours is not one of them. But um, they have the apricot brandy, the Barbados rum, the Sauterne. Mm -hmm. They have several. And luckily, you have a friend who's going yeah. to Ireland. So you could probably manage to bring you some. I, I love a Barbados rum finish. Those are yeah. really they have a black strap rum. They have a cherry brandy cask that was actually a Netherlands release originally. So that was a whole lot of me and a friend getting together, trying to figure out how to read enough Dutch 
to order the bottles. Oh my God. And let me tell you, you do that <laughs> once and they reach out to you directly to tell you it's restocked so you can get some more. Nice. From the Netherlands to Ireland. Yeah. So me and Stacy have done one video together on my channel where she walked yeah. through like her recommendation. It was like five recommendations of like Irish whiskeys and two sacks was one of them. And that's the two first time I've ever heard of it. So since then I've been trying to look for one and get one. I will yeah. I mean, 65% Irish whiskey for about less than $70. Can't beat that. That's so hard. I will be at that party source in like three days. So <laughs> I'm going to check that out. They have the regular. Yeah. If, if you like this next one, yeah, you'll you definitely need to pick up. Yeah, you get a single two stacks release in New Jersey. That's probably a a, a barrel pit bottle. Ah, uh, Bourbon School. Cheers, Bourbon School. <clears throat> and Teresa, say it isn't a bourbon guy drinking Irish. Teresa is from TikTok. I know Teresa knows you. Hey, it's Lodge of Sandy of Chima. It is good to see you. I think I've turned into a bourbon guy. <laughs> I started as a Scotch guy, if that helps. <laughs> Hey, cheers, Top Dog. It's good to see you. All right. So I thought you would appreciate this, this next one. So this is Two Sack Smoke and Mirrors. So this is 30% peated malt that is triple distilled aged in bourbon cast, 60% stout malt that is finished in imperial, ex imperial oatmeal stout casks, 10% double distilled malt finished in first fill bourbon casks. Okay. Pause. Can we just talk me through that again? What? <laughs> so this is made up. 60% of it is triple distilled single malt that was finished in an ex-imperial oatmeal stout cask. Okay. 30% of it. Stout. What is oatmeal stout? Um, I know imperial stout is a more spicy. It's like a Russian imperial. Like you get Russian imperial stout. Okay. I'm guessing Sugar Kitty knows all the definitions of this. <laughs> Oatmeal stout, I know there's oatmeal actually in the mesh. Okay. 30% peated malt, so triple distilled aged in bourbon cask, and it's peated. So it's a they use peat in the firing. That I got that part. Malt. Yep. Yeah, that makes peat malt. 10% double distilled malt in first fill bourbon casks, okay. which I love that because that is one of the biggest misconceptions about Irish whiskey is, oh, it's all triple distilled. That's why it's so smooth. There is a lot of double distilled um malt irish whiskey mm -hmm. in the u.s They're, the whole tier connell the, all of that is coolly double distilled really yeah oatmeal stout is just oats in their mash in the grain bill yeah that's what i thought i think that's what threw me off i heard oatmeal yeah. way okay but, yeah way imperial stout is a higher abv is what top dog says okay i can't wait to try my first two stacks yeah two stacks is something special so then this one is finished if that's not enough, this one is finished in a maple syrup cask, 56.4% ABV. And this one at the time I got it was a where else but Canadian release. No way. Canadian well, I guess Canada. maple, they probably use Canadian maple casks. <laughs> I would think. Yeah. So, yeah, luckily, I, I was telling Sheree, luckily I had a business trip to Alberta. And uh, thank you, Ben Demon Hunter. He actually um, sent me somewhere I could get this whiskey. I had it shipped to the hotel I was staying at in Alberta just to pull this bottle back. Because let me tell you, getting whiskey from Canada is really hard. You actually have to go there. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Okay. Woo. The peanut now, this one is available in Ireland now. Hey, Donald. Donald Rance, my speak of the devil. We're just talking some Canadian whiskey, Donald. So we're talking some Irish Canadian whiskey. We're having the two stacks, smoke and mirrors, maple syrup stout cask. I would love to know the PPM on this, which I doubt is on the bottle. It is not. You know, I could ask them though. They would tell me. But they would tell me. If they do. The notes on me. this compares to some of the very, very peaty scotches I've had. Yeah. They would tell me, and this is a lighter one. I've got some really peated Irish, but they would tell me. That's a funny thing. So the, the I, I was talking to somebody the other day. I'm like, I don't know if it's ironic or appropriate. The big Ohio Irish event. You know how who I heard about that first? Mm -mm. I heard it from the Irish distillers. Really? I, yeah, I had three of them say, hey, there was just a really big order placed for Ohio. 
So apparently there's something going on. And, and yeah, I, I had Clonic Hill JJ Corey and Wayward Irish all telling me about that. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. So on the nose, it was just like, it was almost like Port Charlotte, Octomore levels of peat and smoke on the nose. It's not on the palate. I get none of that on the palate. No. That's nuts. No, and these are the ones I wanted to give you a little more on a sample so you could enjoy it after as well. Yeah, these I figured you would like this one. If anybody could appreciate wow. the, the peated one, I figured you would. I love what the maple's doing. It's like it's not too much. Yeah. Like when this it's spicy and smoky, and when the sweet comes in, it's maple sweetness, but it's just a touch of it. Yeah, it's not overwhelming maple. Not yeah. at all. I've seen maple done not well and this is definitely just like no, a hint yeah. of me no it's just a nice bit of sweetness just to tame down the smoke a bit yeah i love this and i know a lot of my scotch friends would love this <clears throat> yeah this is a nice one a nice abv above i mean it's 56 a little above 56 56.4 for the canadian one I know that this is available in Ireland now. So it was so popular. They did make it an Irish release as well. I still, the one thing that still strikes me about this one is how the nose and the palate are so different. Like yeah, you very, don't get a lot of peat on the, the nose. Very smoky. Get, well, no, I'm sorry, on the palate. You get a yeah. lot of the peat on the, on the nose. but Very peaty and smoky on the nose. And then the palate is just kind of like this smooth ride of like sweet, smoky mapleness. This is really now good. assuming this is the age of the same age as their regular um cast drink blend, those are all about four and a half years. And they don't drink like they're four and a half years old. That's nuts. Yeah, they don't. That's the same thing with Octomore, which is Brooklady's like super mm -hmm. peated version of their scotch. Um, it's like they're it's super, super peated, very smoky. You would expect it for the price point that they sell it for it to be like very old, but it is also one of their younger products. Like wow. I did not years. realize that. Yeah. You know McClellan's? I'm sure you've been to McClellan's. Oh yeah. I yeah. love that place. We, have... we actually, so the Shamrock Club, if you notice, if you walk in the door, there's a Shamrock like on the sidewalk. We painted that. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I took a video of that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we were there and we had, she always has like the latest Optimore available. And that's where I had like 14.1. Very, I very peated. I love that place. I yeah. drank them out of, they they actually did have Tillamore Dew Phoenix until I got there. I drank them out of it. I drank them out of last of it. I couldn't believe they still had it. I love that if they know that you love a bottle, they will just leave it at your table. Oh yeah, they, they brought me the empty. They're like, you just finished it. Do you want that? And they brought the empty bottle out. That's amazing. Yeah. I love going there. I'm like, I couldn't believe you still had it. It's discontinued. Like me and my friends stock up on that every time we come across one. That's awesome. Uh, if you're ever yeah, there. It's a really great know. bar here in Columbus up in Dublin. If you, anybody comes to Columbus. Yeah. Let me know. Because I'm like seven minutes away. So I will meet you there. Oh. I am going to have to get a hold of you because we don't get up to Dublin too much. Um, we're up there in August because my husband and I are um, work the sports committee chairmen. So we run the darts tent at the Dublin Irish Festival all, all weekend. We're there the entire weekend. Which tent? The, the darts tent at the Dublin Irish Festival. Oh, nice. We're there. The, yeah, we're there from open to close all three days. I can't, That's literally like five minutes or less. <laughs> <from> my... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're there the whole weekend long. You know, like we always we get a hotel too because we're like we're not driving back and forth. Yeah, I lived in I've lived in this house for four years in Dublin, Ohio, and I've never been to that festival, and I've never been to the the golf tournament that's here. This li I live in this neighborhood, Muirfield. Never. Okay, been. I can't help you there, but yeah, get a hold of me. We get tickets for the Irish festival. Hit me up. I will go this. Take the I will the go kids this. would love it. The kids would get such a kick out of it. It really is great for kids. I don't, we've always just been like out of town at that time. I don't know. I will go this year. Let me yeah. know. It's the first weekend in August. 
My that birthday is August 10th, so it could be like my little gift to my a great birthday present. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would love to try some Irish whiskey with you over there. I I hope no one from the Dublin Irish Festival is listening that I probably usually have it on my person as I cruise through because they don't check us because we're we, literally we have chairman stuff on. We cruise past the lines because we're running the freaking thing. Yeah. And I might have flasks on my person. Actually, I might have my Asian or set. That thing is perfect for that event, let me tell you. Yeah. I have I have asked them so many times, like I will do a free video for you. Just send me the product and they like, I can't get it from them. Yeah, oh, I paid for it. I did. But I tell them, I actually told them I'm like they need to market it um towards Irish whiskey people too cuz I know they do heavy for bourbon, but let me tell you there, I have several Irish whiskey drinkers, friends, that we all have that kit. I think it's awesome. It's a great kit. I love it. <clears throat> the little four bottles, my little pen. and Nice. We fill them up every day. All right. We're going to do this on my channel at some point with bourbon. Yes. Um, maybe we do it with either scotch or bourbon. I'll pick one. Um, but we're going to do the same thing. I'll take you through a flight of some That'd sort of some theme of the whiskey, and we'll do it that way. Um, that I gotta great. think about it, but we'll do that. <laughs> All of you look forward to those posts about when that's gonna be. I'll try to think about it tonight. Um, that would be great. I know your family is home, and I know you gotta go. That's why I'm kind of wrapping this up on my end. Yes. Like, here, so, I hear a crying thank you, kid thank you run. so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I look forward to doing more with you in the future, Shri. Thank you again. Love it. This was great. Thank you. Uh, do I just hit the leave button and then I have yeah, to just it? hit leave. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Guys, make sure you, if you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok, make sure you're subscribed to and following two ounce whiskey. Instagram so thank is you again. We're going to work. You go ahead. We're going to do the Patreon giveaway. Okay. Instagram so. is like my main page. I yeah, do it. Go guys, there. go. I know a lot of you guys are on Instagram. Hit so. me up over there. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you so much. All right. So I am going to go back up here. So I know Sugar Kitty put the link. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. So there's the link. Make sure if you guys are on Instagram, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Shree's awesome. He is local. Um, he's local to me. Really nice guy. It, it was so nice to introduce him to Jason and to see all these people at the Ohio events this year. We're going to give away some, some whiskey. So let me bring up my wheel here. All right, so thank you to all my Patreons. I, I really love you guys. You guys really help me keep doing this. Um, as a small channel, you know, there there's money's going out the door. Nothing's really coming in. So this really helps me out. And I absolutely love sharing whiskey with you guys. So I've decided for March. March is a big one. I'm so excited for St. Patrick's Day every year. So I'm going to give away... The samples of all the whiskey that I picked up for Ohio, you're going to get a lot of Ohio single picks. You're also going to get, I'm going to throw in the brand new Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Dunville's 11-year single cask bottle that I picked up um, just last week. So I'm going to send you samples of all of that. So let's hit shuffle here. Where's my mouse? So one, two, three, four. Five. All right. Good luck, everyone. Congratulations, Drifting Drams. So I will get your samples out to you this week. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, ah, thank you, Sugar Kitty. Thank you so much. Yes, if you would like to join the Patreon, um, I share new releases with you. Um, the latest new release, which I didn't really um, capture in the beginning, is a brand new Red Breast Iberian Series Irish Whiskey Single Pot Still. And that one is unfortunately only available at the Dublin and Cork Airport. But if you have friends who are traveling to Ireland, if you're going to be traveling to Ireland, Make sure you look out for that one. It's the next in the Iberian series. Um, it is got um, port, P 
PX and some virgin oak. It is 46% ABV. I don't know the price of it, but make sure you guys check out that one. Um, I might see you next week. I am in the process of moving my studio. So the um, Wi-Fi kind of stinks here in the basement. So we're moving my studio up to the second floor. So if I can get that done this week, uh, we will be live next week. Otherwise, I'll, I'll keep you guys in the know though. So Slancha, thank you all for joining me. Make sure you check out Livewire that's going live at 9 p.m. And I'll see you guys next time. Happy March.